and welcome to Space here from the city of Lucerne in Switzerland. We're here for a summit meeting. The leaders of the European space sector are in the city in order to decide the future of some of the most important missions, such as the International Space Station and ExoMars. So let's have a look at what was decided. Lucerne offered a scenic backdrop to ESA's Space Summit, the crucial ministerial meeting held every two years when the agency's 22 member states spend 48 hours debating one subject, Europe's future in space. After posing for the family photo, they closed the doors to begin debating the big questions, ExoMars and the International Space Station. A ministerial council is never easy. Uh, it's my sixth ministerial council, it's the first uh, on the side of ESA. And I can tell you it's never easy. Well, it is always difficult to find a consensus. We always do, as you know. Uh, that's why we are always <laughs> having a successful outcome. But the nights and the days and the very early mornings, you know, are always really, really heavy. The run-up to Lucerne wasn't smooth. Last month, the ExoMars Schiaparelli probe crashed into Mars when it should have landed gently. With the broader ExoMars mission facing a 436 million euro shortfall, industry insiders admitted there was a risk this joint Russian and European project could be abandoned. Actually, we had some doubts. Uh, however, the confidence was coming from the fact that everybody who needs to know knew that we are already on the way to continue. We've been working like all the funding was there anyway. That choice to continue building ExoMars was shown to be the right one, as the Italian government set the stakes high early by promising an extra 35 million euros. I don't think it's a, it's a question of conflict between countries. It's a question of different points of view, because, uh, I don't know, Italy has uh, some priorities. Uh, my intervention was absolutely grounded on this uh, uh, list of priorities and they said uh, for us it's important ExoMars because of this. In the poker game of space politics, ExoMars emerged a winner with the UK and France also raising their stakes, guaranteeing the 2020 rover mission the financing it needs to completion. That decision was underscored by these new high resolution images of Mars just taken by the ExoMars TGO spacecraft. Uh, you have challenges, things don't always go right, you learn from them and move, move on. But I think being able to show that we're already getting value out of the uh, first part of ExoMars uh, certainly helped the story. Um, but the story is also about the, the potential for the impact, the excitement of this mission and the real excellent science that's going to come out of it. The other big ticket space project in need of cash in Lucerne was the International Space Station. ESA struck a deal to finance it until 2024, but big questions remain about when it will be replaced and what with. Germany uh, made a contribution which allows for the prolongation of the space station until 2024. Our government committed for that period. And uh, what is happening after the space station, this is something which we will now, in the next year, uh, discuss with all our European partners. The future will be decided through discussions with our associates at the International Space Station. We're pretty sure that there will be further exploration. We talk about the Moon, we talk about Mars. We've always believed that the two are not mutually exclusive. Nevertheless, it wasn't plain sailing for everyone in Lucerne, in particular for AIM, the mission to redirect an asteroid. Billed as a test of whether Earth could defend itself from an asteroid, it failed to receive the just over 100 million euros it needed to proceed in its current form. So why hadn't it succeeded? We had to put a lot of money, all the countries had to put a lot of money to secure the space station and also to secure ExoMars and also the other programs. And that was the reason. It was not a lack of interest. So, the key outcomes, a total of 508 million euros per year will be spent on science missions, with a few major projects now nearing launch. 2018 is going to be an amazing year when we're going to be launching the James Webb Space Telescope, biggest space telescope ever, uh, a European mission, Bepi Colombo, going to Mercury. Uh, we're hard at work uh, in the science programme on the mission to Jupiter and its icy moons, which is going to be incredible. 
The other outcome, Europe's heavy lifting Ariane 5 will be gradually replaced by the far less costly and more flexible Ariane 6 by 2020. And millions continues to be poured into Earth observation and telecoms. Millions of euros which the ministers here were quick to remind us will come back in contracts for companies across the continent. We need a little Swedish company in a really specific sector. We need the Germans, we need the Italians, we need the Spanish, we need the French. We need the European space team to unite together, to be equal to the Americans, for example, who spend ten times more than us in Europe on the same thing. Overall, the Ministerial Council finished with a budget of 10.3 billion euros over the next three to eight years. A little down on the 11 billion ESA had asked for, but a clear sign of political confidence in Europe's space sector. As you've just heard, the future of the ExoMars mission is now secure. We've been following it all year in our mini-series Destination Mars, and for this final episode, we met up with one of the key members of the rover team. I'm Andrew Coates, in charge of the PanCam instrument on the ExoMars 2020 rover. Our camera is going to be at the top of the mast of the rover. Um, it's actually a little bit wider than this one. We have a 50 centimetre um, width between the two eyes of the wide-angle cameras. So with those two, we're going to be get, get being able to get stereo images and look at the, uh, look at the terrain near the rover um, and help to look where to drill, basically. All in all, it's probably the most powerful camera system ever to be sent to Mars and uh, will be able to, to give us a really good context for the ExoMars rover mission. Drilling um, is the key new thing which we're going to be able to do with this, with, with this, with this rover compared to any other. The drill will be getting a sample, bringing it back into the rover um, and uh, analysing it on board and sending the information back to Earth. And so what we're looking for um, are things like carbonates, um, sugars, amino acids, um, things like that, which could potentially be um, underneath the surface of Mars in this relatively protected environment, left over from probably life there 3.8 billion years ago. I think there could have been life on Mars and might even be life on Mars. Um, and of course, this is what the rover is going to investigate. That's all we've got time for in this programme. Next month, we'll be back with a report about exoplanets. In the meantime, you can keep up to date with other news from the universe on our space blog on Euronews.com. <laughs>